Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to the PHP Programming Video 64. In this particular video, we're, of course, building our Facebook uh, Flash Builder application. And we're looking at the Tween Light Engine and also the difference between Design View and Source View. So in the previous lesson, we actually uh, put a little title on the screen. And that title actually tweens forward as you uh, run the uh, application. So let's go ahead and run it and look at it again. So right in the home state, you can see the PHP in five lessons by Lively is tweening forward. And so what we want to do is actually look at the Tween Light engine that I'm using to make this happen and just talk a little bit about the difference between Source View and Design View. So we're in Adobe Flash Builder and Adobe Flash Builder has an extremely powerful mechanism and that is Source View and Design View. And we're in uh, Source View right now we, and we use most of that to actually build our application but really when I'm building an application I'm actually going between Source View and Design View. So let's go to Design View real quick. And in Design View, I have two important panels, and I have the uh, Navigator panel and the Components panel. I can click between the two, and the Package panel, or the Navigator panel, enables me to go between the different elements of my program. And the Components allows me to drag different components over into Design View, and that automatically writes the code for me for that component. So in the previous example, I was working with these two text boxes. Now, I didn't code these text boxes. I actually uh, just drug them over. So, for example, if I need a text box on the screen, I just come over to my components panel. I look for a rich text box, and I just drag it over and drop it. And you can see that's actually highlighted. So if I go to a source view, I can actually take a look at that particular uh, text box, so it's highlighted as well. In order to control it, though, I want to give it an ID. So I'll give it an ID, and just put a space in there, and all my code heading comes up. Type in ID, and I could call it my text. And then whenever I try to program or work with that particular item, all I have to do now is refer to its ID value. And that's exactly what's happened. Let's go back and get rid of this since we won't be using this text box. So click on it and delete. So easy to get rid of them. And let's take a look at one of these text boxes that I'm actually using. So this particular case, I actually did the same thing. I just drug a text box to the screen. I gave it an ID name text1 and the other one was text2. And so higher up in my program, in order to control those, I actually had to put the input from the XML into the text uh, one text box and text two text box. Now, there's one more thing that helps me out when I'm working in design view and that's to click on the element for example and come up here to windows and go to properties and when you do that you have another properties panel that comes up and in that properties panel I can make all types of adjustments I can actually set the color of my text if it's bold or not if it's centered or not and actually tons of different properties and actually if you come up here and you click on this panels up here you can actually change your view of those properties here's basically an A to Z of all the possible properties so if you're familiar with uh, Visual Basic for example this is very similar to that I'll go back to this view right here that's more of a simpler view gives me some of the basic properties I typically use all the time so that's pretty much a 101 on how to use the uh, design versus source view I actually go back and forth all the time and uh, once I'm created something design I'm over in source and I'm programming it and getting it to run and so what I did right here is I actually created a group and actually programmed that group in put my text boxes in between that group and I gave it the ID my group name and now I'm going to control that group name using tween light so I'm going to use that ID to animate my title and bring it to the front of the screen when the program starts up and the vehicle I'm going to use to make that happen with is Tween Light. So let's go to the web and take a look at Tween Light. So right now I'm on the web. I'm on the Tween Light uh, website. Just go to www.greensock.com forward slash Tween Light. Now why do we need a tweening engine, by the way? Well, basically, uh, Flash Builder does not have a timeline like Flash does. So we actually need to actually be able to tween and move things around. And the only way to do that is actually programmatically. So I work with AS3, of course, and you should too. And go ahead and download the AS3 Tween Light Engine. And it's free, and it's wonderful. I've actually used it for about two years now. And uh, it's just so easy to program. Now, is it perfect? Well, I think it's pretty good. And probably just as good as any other tween engine. But the, what makes it uh, attractive is it's just so easy to use. From time to time, I come to a point where actually I'm crammed on resources, and so I actually write my own simple tween engine, a little simpler than tween light. We'll call it lively simpler than tween light engine. But for the most part, when I'm working with stuff like we're doing now, that's not very resource intensive. I'll actually use tween light, and uh, it just works fine. So go ahead and download tween light, and when you do, you'll, you'll come up with what's called a GS folder, and you actually want to just plop that GS folder right into your. Um, application as I've already showed you previously and if you open that up there's just all types of wonderful stuff here and if you want to learn how to build uh, tweening engines you just go through the different folders and classes and see how they're written and then you can write your own so that's just really how easy it is so we've got a really a great thanks to Greenslock this is a wonderful open source uh, engine and you actually can update it by paying a little bit of money but for our needs and purposes today just use the open source it's fantastic so how do you write a simple uh, tween light method 
So let's go up into our application, into our scripting. And just below the get data uh, handler, I actually have the tween light method. It's called initiate holodeck. So let's kind of just follow the program flow real quick. The program is initiated and creation complete handler fires. Then you actually go and you get the uh, data. The data runs the result handler. And in the result handler, you actually, after you've gotten the text for the two text boxes, you actually run what I call initiate holodeck. And that particular item actually just runs a tween light method. And all you do is go tween light dot two, then put a parenthesis, and then put the ID name of the thing you want to tween. The two, that's the number of seconds it's going to tween. And what I'm going to do right in this particular example is tween the alpha and tween the Z. So if you take a look at the initiation method right here, the alpha is initially zero and the Z is 200, which means it's 200 pixels back on the screen. So what I want to do in my tween light is take the group and change its alpha to 1, make it visible, and change its Z to 0, bring it right to the zeroth position on the screen, which actually sits right on the screen. So in this particular case, um, it's extremely simple. I just take my group, and in two seconds, I'm going to change my alpha to 1 and my Z to 0. And that method is run after everything is parsed and the text uh, elements are put into place. So let's go ahead and run the method and watch it go. And there you have it, alpha from 0 to 1 and z from 200 to 0. So at this point, we've actually finished up our elementary discussion of tween light. It's just that easy to use. You could also put an incomplete method in your tween light that basically fires after the tween is completed. We won't use it for this program, but we will be using it for programs to come. But this was just so easy to execute. That's what makes tween light just so attractive. So uh, if you want to learn more, dig into the tween light documentation. And actually on the tween light site as well, there's actually uh, tons of documentation on how to run it and do different types of tweens. And, and it's very rich, and I use it whenever I need it. So uh, happy tweening. And so what did we learn today? Basically what we did is we learned a little bit about the source view and design view and basically how to go between the two. We learned by using design view, you can actually switch between a number of panels such as package and component. And also you can use your properties panel to work with the properties of any component that you might drag to the stage, such as this text box that I actually drug to the stage earlier in the program. Also, in source view, I learned how to use tween light, and uh, we learned how easy it was to actually basically import the tween light package after unzipping it from Greensock's site. Is that once you've unzipped uh, the download from uh, Greensock's site and you've put the GS folder in your source folder, you actually want to make sure that you import that as well. In this particular case, you can see I'm importing that GS folder dot star. That's the wildcard and that'll basically just bring everything in that's in the tween light package. We had mentioned that earlier, but I just want to hammer that one more time. Once you've imported that package into your program, then you have the ability to access all the methods within it. And one of the important methods, of course, is the tween light dot two method. So let's see if we can find that tween light dot two method in the actual tween light package. So if you come down to the GS folder inside that there's a tween light uh, class. So let's click on that. And here's the tween light class. Now what's really cool about this is there's tons of documentation in this particular class and actually shows you how to create different types of tweens and different methods and functions that are in there. So if you're looking for documentation without actually going to the web, it's right here in the class itself. And then they have tons of examples that you can sift through here, just written right in the web. And you can see basically the whole tween light too, and how you would tween a movie clip, for example, the seconds, the alpha, the X, and the volume. Whatever property that exists in the particular uh, movie clip or component that you're dealing with can be tweened. So that's so cool about tween light. So if you come down a little bit lower, then you can actually find the different methods that you're working with. And I'm just come down here just a little bit lower. And there's the two method right there. So tweenlight.2 actually runs this method right here, which takes all the parameters that we've been discussing earlier. So with that said, you've got tweenlight now in your application. You've imported it by going gs.wildcard, which is your access to all the methods inside the GS folder. And once we brought that in, we're just basically able to declare the tweenlight.2, put in the name of the group that we we're tweening, and you can tween any a type of component, not just this group, uh, the number of seconds you need to tween it in, and we change the alpha and the Z value. So just so easy to use. I would suggest you use this tween light. If you need something a little lighter than tween light, write your own tween engine. Hey, thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. We're moving on, and I'll see you in the next video.